just about ready to roll. And today's starting pitcher, Jamison Tyon. And Singy, he likes pitching at home. Well, truly for him, there is no place like home. He's been so dominant here. And as a teammate, you expect him when pitching at home this year to go out and dominate just as he has. The fans expect it. But I think everyone around here knows that he's a good pitcher. Even though we don't see the same splits on the road, we're going to start to see that translate as well. And now the right fielder, Manuel Margot. Sharp grounder. That's through for a base hit. So a man on base to start the inning. Batting second. The center. Here's Byron Buxton. Byron Buxton. Lace down the line. Could be extra bases. Margot. Round second on his way to third. Headed for the plate. He scores and they have the lead. One nothing. Comes through with the RBI. When you connect and it jumps off your bat like that. You're thinking double at the very least. Put a great swing on it, and man, he wasn't fooled at all. Here's Royce Lewis. Two and one now. Hitter's got yeah. some good opposite field power. What I like about something being hit to the right side into the outfield is that the base runner at second has a very good read and can determine whether or not he can score on that base hit. Right into the play. That's oh. down and in. Really good take, especially with okay. two strikes. And he walked him. Well, a great back and forth and that at bat. He had to lay off some really close pitches and somehow Boogie found a way to keep the bat on his shoulder right there. I'll tell you right now, I couldn't have done it. And the batter down. Jose Miranda. This might be the most pressure you put on this guy today. You got one run in, you got to try to get another one or maybe two. That catches the top part of the zone. It's two and two. It's great to get on the board in the first frame of the ball game, but here's an opportunity for them to really open things up with a couple of runners on. Let's see if they can cash in. And a base hit coming home. Now a long throw home. It's offline. The run comes in. It's two nothing. Well, he wasn't afraid to hit with two strikes. I think he choked up a little bit, maybe spread out, but he got the job done right there. North side of Chicago, John Chambi and Chris Singleton. And now it's the switch hitter, Carlos Santana. And here it comes. And a foul ball. First and second, no outs. And we're just getting started here in the top of the first. Fouls it off, still one and two. The pitch. The punch out there. One down. Ryan Jeffers at the plate. The 1-1. One -one. Runners on the move. Hit in the air. Right field. No trouble here. Puts it away for the end. And there's two away. Now the lineup for the Twins as constructed by Rocco Baldelli. And Chris, this group has been struggling to put up runs lately. Well, they haven't been on base a ton, and even when they are, they haven't been hitting very well with the runners on base. So they need a guy or two to really step up, have some quality at bats, hit according to the situation, and sort of break out of this. I think if they do, the rest of this lineup will follow. Swings and misses. And a count one and two. Well, lots of pitches thrown in this first inning, and it's kind of that nightmare scenario for starting pitching. But you know what? It's still early enough. He can settle in. He can get some length if he just cleans up his mechanics a little bit. Just oh. misses the mark outside the zone. It's a good take. Foul ball, another 2-2 two -two upcoming. Two on, two outs. 
And that's Ooh, off the inside edge. Ball three. Spoils the two strike pitch and he'll see another. Ah. Struck him out looking. But two runs for him and they jump ahead. On to the bottom of the first. It's the Twins two and the Cubs coming up. Back here at the friendly confines. And today's starting pitcher, Pablo Lopez. What do you got on him, Chris? Well, no doubt about it. He's going to have to put together some consistently good performances in order to bring that ERA down. Now, he's got good stuff. He's just got to be able to have confidence, trust it, and really go after hitters. Not nibble. Trust that his stuff can have late life and miss barrels of bats. Well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. Got him looking. One out. Batting second. And next for the, the Cubs, Bush Michael Bush. Michael. Just oh, no. missed. Good eye in that spot. Right through there for a strike. One out, base is empty. And that one in the air, center field. Buxton moves under it. Makes the catch. And there's two down. Here's a look at the Cubs lineup. One guy leading the way offensively for this club right now, Ian Happ. And Boog, he's a big-time run producer for these guys, man. Leading the team in homers, runs batted in, doing damage on the regular, man. Making opposing pitchers just sweat out there. It's kind of fun to watch. Get ready for a show when he steps into the box. Next to hit, Fight. Seiya Suzuki. One ball, two strikes. Two out, space is empty. Two, and two. another ball. Next offering popped in the air, right field. Castro settles underneath it, makes the grab, and that ends the inning. Nothing happening there for the Cubs. They trail it here, 2 nothing. Second inning set to go. And stepping in, the rookie left fielder, Austin Martin. 1-1 one, one now. This ball's chopped on the ground. Gets it to first. Got him. One up, one down. And now, Brooks Lee. Next offering is in for a strike. Two ball, two strike. And a good eye there. Boog, I'm not sure Look how out. he took that right there. I mean, that was an incredible two strike pitch. Woody Keller making the calls behind home for us today. And Boog, something to keep an eye on is how pitchers utilize the top part of the strike zone. We see a lot more of that in today's game with pitchers going up there with hard stuff. Keller, definitely an umpire that isn't afraid to call strikes up in that part of the strike zone. One down, base is empty. Now a screamer into the outfield. He's got it, and there's two away. What about an umpire's height? How much of a role does that play in your experience and what the strike zone is like? 
Yeah, I think it pushes the strike zone up a little bit, which, you know, as a former hitter, you like that. You wanted the ball up. You didn't want to have to deal with stuff down in the zone consistently. Hard grounder into the outfield for a knock. So a two-out knock keeps the inning alive. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. Not much to this one other than just a willingness to go the other way and put the ball in play. That's a team to bat right there. Nice job of staying back and letting the ball get deep. Byron Buxton digs in now. High fly ball out to center field. Crow Armstrong should have it, and that'll do it. One left for Minnesota, but they're on top 2-0. Back here at Wrigley Field, field. we head to the bottom of the second. Here's Cody Bellinger. Bellinger. Cody Bellinger. And that no, one a little below the knees. Two and one. Clearly trying to stay back a little bit longer for that changeup as he fouls that fastball back. Hit hard on the ground to short. Tosses to first. Yes, you're out. And Bellinger is out. That is good. The third baseman. Isaac Brady's now. The Cubs trailing by two. Bottom half of inning number two. Next offering misses, and a count two and one. That one is absolutely belted. Marco going back on this one, and that one hops the wall. And he starts his afternoon off right with a double. Well, that was one of those high percentage advantage counts where batting averages are just so much higher. Pitch was away, and he did exactly what you're supposed to do with it. Drive it the other way. Just go with the pitch. Here's Nico Horner. And a pitch. And there's a foul ball. Paredes leads off second with one gone in the inning. That one 95 to finish him off. Boog gets talked about a lot, but a good high fastball in a two-strike situation, it's just become such a problem for hitters in more recent years. But with all of the emphasis by pitchers on developing that spin rate, having a good grip on the baseball, those high fastballs, they kind of look like to the hitter that they're rising, even though they're not, but they're not decreasing in velocity and spin rate. So very difficult to get the barrel on it. And Pablo Lopez will deliver. Ball. That one just misses. Shoot, shoot. Bounce to third. Miranda. Jump, bro. They get the out, no, and no. that'll do it. One left for the Cubs. They trail things here, 2-0. Out of the third leading inning, off leading off, off Royce Lewis. Royce Lewis. Kicks and deals. We haven't seen you a break won. in the weather, and the umpires might be forced to make a decision soon. Yeah, I think so, Boog. I mean, everyone looking and wondering when they're going to stop play. It definitely feels close. And puts the squeeze on that one. And there's one down. Go Chris through the early stages. He hasn't been very well, that, efficient that. in terms of the pitch it. count. He's going to need to get some quick outs Miranda. if he's going to get deeper into this game. And next will be the cleanup hitter, Jose Miranda. Line drive, come on! They put a really good swing on that pitch and hit the ball hard. You know, line drives won't always find a hole, but the more you can hit the ball like that with good exit velo, the better off you're going to be in the long run. It is interesting, though, 
when you consider the way the game is run now, doesn't even matter that much if your starter doesn't go that deep because Ball, teams are hot. really aggressively building their bullpens. And he deals. Hammers that one. Curling down the line. And foul. Next oh, offering is down low. And that's ball three. Fights it off. You'll see another. Right-hander kicks, deals. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. Downstairs, and it misses, ball four. That's a great at bat. He saw a lot of pitches and earned a walk. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. Two outs. Oh, and that one that's missing too low. low. He's really tightening up his hitting zone with two strikes here. I love it. Oh, just God. off the inside corner, and it's three and two. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score. Smash to the left side. To first, He's out. and that is the inning. Twins wind up stranding one as they're unable to add to their 2-0 lead. And we're back. Leading Here's a speed off. threat. Pete Crow Armstrong. Pete Crow Armstrong. And the right-hander deals. Ball two. And there's a base hit to the left. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Well, a swing like that can help you come out of the struggle. We saw the numbers coming into the ball game. But all he's trying to do at this point is help his team win. And now it's Miguel Amaya. Hit on the ground, might be two. They put the tag on him, not in time at first. It's a fielder's choice. The left fielder, number eight, Ian. Ian. Ah. Back to the leadoff spot in the Cubs lineup. Ian Happ up to hit. Happ, a switch hitter, it can be challenging for guys at the big league level to maintain a good swing from both sides of the plate. Clearly, he's got more pop from the left side, but in 2022, the right side was respectable as well. The pitch. And a foul ball. Kicks and fires. And now the count is even. Man at first, one away. This to third. Just a simple okay. ground ball the other way. They had but eyes on it, and sometimes that's all you need to do. Just let the ball travel, put the ball in the play, and just hope it finds a hole. So first and second with one gone. Michael Bush, the next cup to hit. Gonna count one and two. The last thing he wants is to hit the ball on the ground, but I wouldn't expect many pitches up in the zone. They'll be pitching for a double play in this spot. Tying run is at first. Here in the last half of the third. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Now back. Right field. Now here is Seiya Suzuki. I know we're still early in the stages of this game, but this at bat has the potential of being a difference maker. You've got to stay calm in the box. The pitch. And a count one and two. Amaya at second. Pat at first. Two out of the inning.
The one two. Lays out, but he can't squeeze it. That leaves him without a throw, and they come away without an out. Now, now, now. The designated hitter, Cody. Cody. Bellinger. Two outs, bases full. Cody Bellinger, the next cup to hit. Ball and a strike. No trouble here, puts it away for the out. And that will end the inning. Cubs wind up leaving the bases loaded. They're still down. It's two zip. Here at Wrigley Field, start of the fourth. This is Willie Castro. Castro. Looks like the weather could actually play a factor in this one. It's coming down pretty good. Yeah, it is. And it's not too bad yet, but the field's not going to be able to hold up if the rain gets any worse than this. So keep an eye on the pitcher's mound as well and the rest of the infield start to puddle up a little bit. He's there. He's got it. And there's one away. Up next for Minnesota. The left field. So up next for Minnesota, Austin Martin. Base is empty one away. Top half of inning number four. In the air, fairly deep to right field. Suzuki pulls it down, and there's two gone. Now that, the short shot, Brooks Lee. Two outs, base is empty. Brooks Lee, the next twin up to hit. Swings through that one for strike two. One ball, two strikes. Two down, nobody on. And they'll do it again. The one, two. And good work there as he gets a one, two, three. No runs, no hits, no errors. We're midway in the fourth. It's the Twins two and the Cubs nothing. And welcome back to the leading ballpark. Off. John Chavi and Chris Singleton the with you. Baseman. And leading off the bottom of the fourth, Isak oh, Paredes. strike the pitch and he dodges that fastball you know Two these Cubs One just strike. lacking discipline at the plate in this ball game so many of their outs have come from weak contact on pitches they're chasing outside of the strike zone you can't do much of anything with those locations and that's been true again today Margot pulls that one down and there's one down and as a pitcher, when now the hitters back are back swinging back at back everything, back. you feel no Here need to challenge inside the zone. You just keep working the corners and expanding that strike zone and beyond, and they just keep eating right out of your hand. And the righty deals. He's pitching well, but not what throwing a ton of first pitch strikes. It usually doesn't work out for success, but you can never predict baseball. Out to short, Lee. Fires across the out. diamond, two away down. No, well, he's doing a no, nice no, job no. of keeping the ball Shortstop. out of the air. Yeah, Let's yeah, the defense yeah. work behind him with another ground ball. Oh, Good yeah. execution. Dansby Swanson stands in. Swanson, former first round pick by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Vanderbilt player in college, college World Series player, all that good stuff, but really coming into his own. Ball and that's two. down it away. Two one. That three. one misses. Three and one back. Here's an opportunity to do some damage and perhaps unlock this offense. Three one count. Be ready to turn on a fastball. 
three one and he couldn't come up with it. Boom. Do you think you could draw a walk in the bigs if we gave you enough at bats? No, no, Ooh, no. that's a good question. No, no, no. Um, I think that if they gave the pitcher a false scouting report on me, yes, I think I could draw a walk. And a big swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes. And another ball. Two two. Runner on the go. Still two and two after the foul ball. The Twins up by two. We're here at the bottom of the fourth. Ball strike three on the fastball. And that ran back over the inner half. So it's no runs, no base hits, no errors, and a runner left. On to the top of the fifth we go. It's the Twins two and the Cubs nothing. Back here at the friendly confines. Ready now for the fifth inning. And here's the Twins leadoff guy, Manuel Margot. Here's a 1-1. One -one. And a foul ball. One two to Margot. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Here comes a pitch. Swing and a ball lifted to center field. Puts it away for the out. And there's one down. The center field number 25. Byron. So up next, Buxton. Byron Buxton. We talk about guys with good speed, and definitely he has it. But pushing the offense aside for just a second, Chris, it's the defensive side that I think the speed factors in the most. The line of the pitch. Hammers that one deep left field, and forget it. A gigantic blast. His second homer this series, and they add to the lead. It's 3 0. That was blasted. Absolutely, no doubt off the bat. A breaking ball on the inside part of the play requires a hitter to stay really square with his mechanics. If you fly open with the front shoulder, there's no way you keep that ball fair. An outstanding job mechanically. He deserves that home run. So one out, nobody on. And here is Royce Lewis. Curveball drops in there. One, two. One down, base is empty. And another ball. Part of the order coming through now, and with one home run already in this inning, they're definitely looking to do some more damage. Here's the 2 2. Oh, and there's a the ball. No question about this one. It's out of here. A massive home run. And they add a run. It's 4 0. That's a swing that'll boost the win probability for sure. Back-to-back -back homers, always a special feeling at the ballpark, especially if it's your team that does it and those guys get to slap hands at home plate. This is the kind of thing that can really fire up a ball club. Now, so they turn to the lefty in this spot, Justin Steele. Still pretty early in the ball game, so this bullpen has some work to handle. Best-case scenario might be if he can come in here and get several quick outs, kind of bridge the gap that starter left for him. One out, base is empty. Now the third baseman, Jose Miranda. 
Bounced up the middle. Sneaks through. Base hit. So they get a man aboard with a one out single. That's now three now hits in a row for the offense. Three. Really nice job Carlos. staying up the middle with his approach. Santana. He didn't try to do too much with the pitch. Just shot it through the infield. Carlos Santana. The next twin up to hit. So a foul ball makes it one and two. And now the lefty. Two two. Two runs across in the inning. And we're at the top of the fifth. Three and down three. on strikes. And there's two away. Now bad. Man at first, Ryan, Ryan Jeffers, Jeffers now at the plate. Gets him to chase after that one. One ball, two strikes. Chopper to second, corner. Fires over to first. And that is that. But two round trippers in this inning, the long ball was working. It's now a 4 nothing ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Now the Cubs catcher, Miguel Amaya. One, two now. Up the middle. Sends it to first. And that's the first out in the bottom of the fifth. Now bad. No left fielder. Ian. Back to the top of the lineup. Digging in is the switch inning outfielder, Ian Hat. The Cubbies down by four. Last half of inning number five. Not a lot of people know this, but this isn't the only Wrigley Field in MLB history. You know, when the league expanded and added the Los Angeles Angels in 1961, they played their first season at a stadium in L.A. called Wrigley Field, out. which had been the home of the minor league team of the same name. The first, the first base, base is Michael Bush. Two outs, base is empty. Michael Bush, the next to hit. Two outs. No, Just missed. Two ball. balls, one strike. Swing and a high fly ball down the right field line. Marco makes the play, and that's the inning. All right, we go to the top half of inning number six, and now it's the switch inning second baseman, Willie Castro. Here's a 1-1. Slice the other way. That's a base hit. And the leadoff man aboard. Well, just a total nightmare for lefties. I'd be very surprised to see that matchup again. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, you feel really good about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the barrel straight to it. That's great work right there. Checks over to first. Back safely. Castro gets his lead at first. Nobody out. Digging in, Austin Martin. Two. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. One, two. On the ground, a second might be two. Off balance uh. feed. There's one. Throw to first. Thanks. Safe. Now, now. Man at first, and next for Minnesota, Brooks Lee. The pitch. Off and then this is off the outside edge. Next okay. offering is outside. And a pitch. That one out to right. Suzuki has a beat on it. 
Puts it away for the out. Manuel Marco up to play. the plate. The right field. Manuel Marco. The 1-1. One, one. Runner on the go. There's a ball. Throw to second. Save. That was close, but StatCast shows us why he so often seems to be on the safe side of these steal attempts, Chris. Yeah, you see that plus speed, and he needed every last bit of it to swipe that bag. Such a threat on the bases. Man at second. On the ground right side. The throw wide at first, and both runners are safe. It looked to me like he got on the side of the ball a little too much right there. Maybe a little too casual as well with the throwing motion. And when you don't stay on top of the ball and really get out front and finish with a good release point, it's very easy to lose control of it to either side. First and third, two away. Byron Buxton, the next twin up to hit. Lefty out of the stretch, runners at first and third. Not close with that one. And it's two and one. Tough spot right here. A couple runners on. Two ball count. You can't nibble, but you have to execute and finish your pitch. If you leave something out over the plate, it's going to bring in some runs. Two balls, two strikes two to ball. count with two outs. This guy's got such a good sinker. As a hitter, you've got to look up in the zone. If you look down, you're going to be chasing stuff in the dirt. On the ground to short. They get the force. That's out number three. Two left on. Hard of the order, three, four, five coming up. It's the Twins four and the Cubs nothing. Back here at Wrigley we go, Field. Go. Well, we go bottom six. Now it's the right fielder, Seiya Suzuki. Suzuki. And now two and one. You know, these Cubs looking to string together better at bats when they have runners on, but it just hasn't happened for them yet. They only have one hit with runners in scoring position, so a lot of squandered opportunities. It's tough because those are moments you just can't get back. Popped up right side, sizing this one up. And it's caught for the out. Now bad the designated hitter, Cody. One down, Bellinger. here comes Cody Bellinger. Well, just about to hit that century mark, 100 pitches for this game. And there's ball, ball four. Pitch count's getting up there now, and not saying that's the now reason for this wall, no, but three. this is the point in the game when every sign of wavering oh, starts to get down. everyone's attention. Now, these guys definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap. But, you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ballgame. Check on the runner. Bellinger Dang. dives back. This isn't a pitcher that softens up when he starts to show signs of fatigue. I mean, his stuff stays sharp. Makes these at-bats more difficult than they normally. Bellinger goes. Oh, oh. Pitch is high. Throw to second. Oh. You know, something that's often overlooked in a caught stealing situation is just that catcher's footwork. These guys work so hard on just every aspect, receiving the pitch, but then also getting it into a position to get off a quick throw. Right there, that was perfect execution, and it allowed him to get the throw down to second in time. Two down, nobody on. Here in the bottom of the sixth. Popped up, foul territory behind the plate. And makes the play, and that's out number three. Nate Pearson gets handed the rock out of the pen. And he's got a big-time breaking ball to contend with. Uh, hitters are going to have to pick it up early if they're going to have any chance. Number 56. Nate. Royce Lewis getting ready to hit. The designated hitter. Royce Lewis. Ooh. 
ripped on the ground a second. Horner over to first. Oh. And they get the leadoff hitter in the seventh. Now that third base. Jose. Here's the third Miranda. baseman, Jose Miranda. Base is empty one away here in the top half of inning number seven. Foul ball there. A little tardy on that fastball. He's going to have to get it going a little quicker. Get that front foot down. Oh, and down three. on strikes he goes. Two out. Well, definitely a borderline pitch right there. And he didn't look too convinced as he headed back to the dugout. You know, those are tough ones to let go as a hitter. But with the human umpire calling balls and strikes, it's always going to be on you to protect yourself with two strikes. Two outs, base is empty. Carlos Santana, the next twin up to hit. That's next offering ball. upstairs. Full count. The right hander oh, gives up the two out walk. Well, you know this guy wants to swing it, but he's showing some good patience in this one. It's the second time he's taken ball four. Now the catcher up to hit, Ryan Jeffers. Santana off of first with two away. Spoils that one, and it remains two and two. And that's outside. 3-2, two, two out, runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitter's got to stay focused on the pitch. Oh, and a swing and a miss. And that's that. One left for Minnesota. They lead 4-0. Set for the last half of the seventh. Now it's the second baseman, the Nico second baseman. Horner. Nico. Horner. And the pitch. Hit in the air, center field. Buxton moves under it. And out number one on the grab. Now bad. The shortstop. So up now for Chicago, Dansby Swanson. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. That Ball. one missed. Yeah, we go beyond Two just the uh, you know, fielding strike. percentage and you know what it looks like, but the ability to have a range and you know close holes that you know are normally there against an average defender. But this guy is special, and you can see it in his first step quickness. And now it's filled up. Hogan, the one thing about that is speed never goes in a slump. And defense shouldn't either. Hitting-wise, you can struggle. You can lose your mechanics. But the thing that you can do consistently every single game is play great defense if you're talented in that way. And this is what this guy does. Swanson into second, and he's got a double. Showed some really nice patience in that at bat. Worked himself into a good count. Pretty tough for the infielders to do anything with that one. He pulled it hard into the outfield. And even when you keep it on the ground, it feels great when you hit a missile like that. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. Pablo Lopez gives way, and he's responsible for the runner on second, so the book isn't closed on him yet. We'll be right back. Coming out of the bullpen for the Twins, Steven Oker. And they felt it was time to bring on a left-handed reliever from the pen with the lefty hitter coming up. I think it's a good move. I know I never liked when opposing teams did that to me. Man at second with one away. And now the center fielder, Pete Crow Armstrong. On the ground, right side. Oh, and it hits the base. Fair ball. The run comes in from second. It's 4-1. Well, that gets him a little closer in this one. Just one of those seeing eye base hits through the infield. He just kind of rolled over on it a little bit, but sometimes those can find a hole and get you a knock. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. And up next for Chicago, Miguel Amaya. The pitch. 
this to center field. And that'll fall for a base hit. They'll throw to third. Not in time. He's safe. Stringing them together. That's three hits in a row. He clearly didn't catch that one on the big part of the bat. Just kind of muscled it out there and get on the mound. It can be pretty frustrating for a pitcher, but you just kind of have to expect those to drop in there sometimes. And you can feel this crowd waking up a bit here as the guys are starting to make some noise with their bats. Now it's the switch hitting outfielder, Ian Hatt. Ripped to third and caught. It's never fun going back to the dugout after hitting a line drive that finds a glove, but you will get some high fives. You know, when you make great contact, you feel like you've done everything right. But in this game of baseball, not everything is in your control. And next for the Cubs, Michael Bush. The tying run at the plate. And that gets the inside corner for a strike. Tying run at the plate. And ball. there's a ball. Two, two. Oh, oh he doesn't get the call. And now three and two. Seiya Suzuki in the on-deck circle. With the tying run at the plate, near the bottom of the seventh. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Left-hand batter waits. Luke behind second. Brings it in for the third out. Well, they pick up one run on the RBI single. It's now a 4-1 ball game. It's Major League Baseball on the show. Welcome back, and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Julian Merriweather. Pretty tight game, so they're looking for quality pitches out of him right here. Got to do his best to keep the score right where it is. Willie Castro digs in now. The second base. Willie Castro. The 1-1. And that's outside. Well, these twins digging into their numbers have to be happy with the swings they're taking. We've heard lots of loud noise coming from their bats in this one, haven't we? I mean, they've lost oh, no. six hits at 90 plus exit velocity, and that doesn't happen by accident. And a pitch. That one oh, misses. So a leadoff walk. Pretty easy walk right there. Last pitch wasn't even much to think about. So, man aboard, and now for the Twins, Austin Martin. The pitch. So, a foul ball makes it one and two. Castro on at first, nobody out. That one the other way, and that should be extra bases. Around third. He'll score easily. And they lead by four. Puts a run on the board and picks up an RBI. Textbook bat control right there. Got a pitch on the outside. Saw it deep into the zone and just barreled it up. Went the other way for the knock. Brooks Lee, the next twin up to hit. Right-handed reliever. Foul. We'll see another payoff pitch. Man at second. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Pulled the string and the changeup. He's locked in at the plate, but he's using the whole field. He was out in front there. Just needs to let the ball travel a little more, and his timing will be back on track. Good pitch for the strikeout. Here's Manuel Margot. Oh, he doesn't get the call. And that's ball three. Good spot there, but didn't get the strike at the knees and doesn't seem too convinced by the call out there on the mound as he tries to get a better sense of the umpire strike zone. Next offer in there for a strike. And it's three and two. And 
And that's ball four. ball four. Up next, 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 next. First and second, one out. Byron Buxton, the next twin up to him. Singy, you got to appreciate a guy who's this good defensively. I mean, watching him track balls in the outfield, it is beautiful. He's so solid, calms the heart rate of the pitcher and the manager when the ball goes up in the air. You just automatically assume that it's an out every time no. it's hit in the air. Good eye right Two there. One There's strike. one guy that I can think about, Boog, who started as a third baseman, Alex Gordon, and then became an elite perennial gold glover out in left field for the Kansas City Royals. But he's a guy, when you watch him play, you would imagine that that's all he ever played in his life was the outfield. Swing and a miss struck him out. That's that classic wipeout slider below the zone right there. Just nasty. Looks like a fastball thigh high that you got to protect the zone. And then it's just that late break that fools you and kind of makes you look silly. The 1 1. Swing and a line drive, slicing into right field. Base hit. Here's the throw to the plate, but it's offline. Just so sound in his mechanics. Hits against a firm front side, and the hands just continue to carry through the middle of the field. New pitcher in the game for the Cubs. Number 21 hasn't pitched in the last three days. Robert. Now the Minnesota cleanup hitter, Jose Miranda. Well struck left field. Off the scoreboard and out of here. A mammoth blast to right. So he just clears the wall. It's 9-1. That's their third home run of the game. They're having a lot of fun at the plate in this one. They've got the long ball working for them on autopilot. So, Singy, this is a little bit of a surprise. A guy known for line drives hits one over the fence. Well, if you're a little too early, you'll get some elevation in the ball, get out of the ballpark. For him, it's kind of a mistake. But you know what? When you have such a good approach, every now and then you're going to run into one. So, two away with nobody on. Next is switch hitting first baseman, Carlos Santana. Two down, nobody on. Ball two. The Cubs bullpen with some action. Jorge Lopez up and loosening in the pen. Two outs. This one popped up. Paredes settles under this one. Makes the catch in and over. But not before five cross the plate. With a big blow being this three run homer. And this is now a 9-1 ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Here at Wrigley Field, bottom of the eighth. And now the right fielder, Seiya Suzuki. At the belt and fires. In the air, pretty deep out to center field. One away. Now, the designated hitter, Cody. Bellinger up to hit. And a pitch. Ball. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Bailey Ober warming up for manager Rocco Baldelli. Sands warming up as well. Left-hand hitter waits. Down. Edge of the zone for a strike, and the count's full. Bases empty, one away. Here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. One down, base is empty. That's foul off to the right side, keeps the A.B. going. Good. 
Got yeah. him looking, and he didn't like the call. No, just couldn't pull the trigger on the fastball right there, and I don't think he was taking it, thinking it might be a cold ball or anything. I just think he was flat out frozen. Did not expect that location, in my opinion. That clips the corner. One ball, two strikes. That one misses, and the count is two and two. Kicks and deals. Swing and a miss, struck him out. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down one, two, three. Cubs are down quietly. They trail it big. It's 9-1. And welcome back to the ballpark. And here's the catcher, Ryan Jeffers. Righty delivers. Swing and a miss as he chases that one darting out of the zone. To the right side. In time to Bush. And the leadoff man retired here in the ninth. The bat. The second baseman, Willie Castro. Here's the second baseman, Willie Castro. One down, base is empty. 3 1. That Four, one's in two. there, and the count's full. Full count. Bounce to the left side. Paredes. Throw sails over his head at first. Well, an error like that, you look at the scoreboard and you kind of wonder if they're losing focus out there. And look, it, it can be tough to stay locked in when you're getting blown out. We've all been there. And I'm not saying that's definitely what happened on this play, but it's not a great look. One out, runner at second. So up next for Minnesota, Austin Martin. Here's a 1-1. One, one. Late that time, and it's strike two. One ball, two strikes. Line drive, caught. That swing right there tells me he's seeing the ball pretty well. I know it didn't produce a hit, but he made solid contact, and that's all you're looking to do anytime you're at the plate. Brooks Lee will hit next. The short shot. Brooks Lee. One one down. No. He delivers outside. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Two ball. Two strike. The other way, and it stays bare around third. And that rolls into the corner. He'll score, and they now lead by nine. And that's a two out double. Well done, drives in the run. That was a thing of beauty. He may have been a little behind the pitch, but by getting that barrel into the hitting zone early on in the swing, he was able to meet it and still shoot a line drive down the line and left. Back to the leadoff spot in the Twins lineup. And here's the Twins leadoff guy, Manuel Margot. Ball Wouldn't two. chase that time. Runner at second, two down. And it's fouled away. Two-two now. Good job to fight.